Welcome to another edition of How to Build Lifetime Cash Flow. This is Rod Cleef, and I am thrilled you're here. And you're going to get a ton of value from the lady that we're interviewing today. Her name is Anna Simpson, and she's personally invested in 1,300 multifamily units as an equity partner, and then recently became a key principal and has taken down one deal already, and I think that another one's coming up in the next day or two. So uh, we're excited that you're on the show, Anna. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Now, I know in a previous lifetime, you were a realtor, uh, and I see that on your bio, but tell us a little bit about how you got into this business and why you're in this business and 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 how much you love this business. <laughs> I love it. That's my <laughs> life. Uh, so I got in this business about five years ago. I, uh, I was a realtor with Keller Williams in South Lake, Texas for several mm-hmm. years, and I was an investor in single family homes. Mm-hmm. I was buying houses, rehabbing them, leasing them out, and keeping them for passive cash flow. That's how I started. Mm. Uh, and I learned about this business through my friends, and I see that they were very successful. So that's kind of uh, was, um, was my idea. Okay. Okay. And I, I think you just told me you have a degree in psychology, which is, which is kind of uh, not, not your typical progression from, <laughs> from psychology to real estate, but uh, obviously it's working. So, well, so t- was, uh, I came here uh, about 13 years ago in America. So my psychology mm. degree is from Russia. Mm. So it would uh, take me additional several years to kind of um, qualify here. So obviously mm. it was not my path. Here. I see. I see. Okay. So tell us about, uh, so you started investing initially in other people's syndications, correct? correct? Yes. When I realized that I would like to kind of stop investing in single family and go into multifamily. So my idea was to invest passively because okay. I think this is a way to really learn this business Mm-hmm. Uh, but um, kind of don't put yourself at risk because right. basically you just all you're risking is your passive investment right and, uh, yet you kind of learn how pe- how other people do it and it's very useful I think sure sure it's a great pl- great way to start so uh, so I, I understand that you have closed on a 70 unit and your, your deals are all in the Dallas Fort Worth area Correct. and that's your target market and tell us about that 70 unit, uh, how that came about, how you found it, uh, and uh, just, just dig into, dig, get a little detail on that. Right. So, uh, so before I was able to take down my own deal, I was a KP for someone else just to, oh, be that's able right. to kind of um, uh, put it on my resume and be considered as an um, uh, experienced uh, investor in the eyes of the lender. So okay, then, so, so you, invested, you invested in somebody else's syndication and you said, hey, I'll do this if you allow me to be a KP so I can put it on my resume. Something yeah, like that? Much. So yes, there were several okay. people who invited to me to be a guarantor, loan guarantor okay. for their mm-hmm. properties. And all, all it takes is basically a net worth, liquidity, and mm-hmm. that's it. Right. <laughs> Nothing else you have to have to be a guarantor. Right. And, uh, so that's what I did. And then in the eyes of the lender, I, of course, uh, now experienced uh, borrower. Right. So with my first deal, I was able to find it through uh, basically relationships. Uh, I kind of, um, um, so my mortgage broker introduced me to the um, listing broker for this deal. Mm. So, and this deal was in the market, so it was competitive situation, but uh, basically using my team, I was able to uh, take it down. Okay. Okay. And um you mentioned team. Talk about, talk about, so have you put together a team now? And, and, and if so, tell us what the components of the team are. Right. So what I usually say, uh, investment in real estate is a very much of a team sport. Mm-hmm. And basically when you invest in houses, you kind of maybe can do it uh, on your own with a couple of people involved. But here it's essential that you have a team created for yourself because this is a very um a complex business and you have to have a different, uh, you have to have a mortgage broker, mentor, um, insurance broker. Uh, of course, you have to have relationships with the listing uh, agents. So it's essential to engage these people at the right time. And of course, the most important is your property manager because that's how you evaluate the deal. Once you're ready to evaluate the deal, you've got to be able to involve them as well. So they help you do your due diligence. 
So and that's, that's so that's how you do it. You utilize them to do to help with your due diligence. They bring their team in. They go through the leases. They go through all the units. Great. Yeah, that's kind of when we have a deal on the contract. But before that, absolutely, when I underwrite the deal, even before I submit the LOI, mm. I always try to engage my property management. Basically, kind of uh, go through pro forma, check mm. on my numbers. I have my numbers. They have theirs, and we basically um, uh, compare it just to make sure that we are on the same page. Because they're the ones who are going to be managing my property. Sure. So you have them help you confirm market rents and Correct. take a look at your expense numbers, see if they make sense, see if they're um, consistent with what their experience dictates. Do you bring your property managers in as, a, as an equity partner or just uh, as no. a man, no, vendor? No, okay. basically on the lending side, I noticed that the lender doesn't want your property manager to be uh, involved. Mm. They actually like it to be a uh, third party, not affiliated. Mm. It even states in my loan documents. So, uh, because they prefer it that way. Did you go Freddie Mac? Yes. Uh, yeah, that, okay. Was, that's why. Okay. Uh, Got very, it. Yeah, because okay. this is smaller transactions. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah and, and, and guys, those of you listening, um, we had James Zhang on from Old Capital. I know you were interviewed on Old Capital. And, and James talked about, uh, you know, with Freddie Mac, if you don't have the experience, you can actually bring in a property manager to satisfy that requirement under Freddie Mac. You can't with Fannie Mae. You, uh, you have to actually have a key principle with experience. But with Freddie Mac, you can actually bring in a property management company if it, you know, if, it, if they um, – fit, uh, you know, the profile that they're looking for uh, to satisfy that requirement. If you've got the net worth and the income uh, and you contract with a local property management company, like I say, that meets their profile, you can actually get a Freddie Mac loan. Um, but uh, you are already a KP, so you have that experience. Right. Okay. Yeah. So it helps a lot to get a good terms uh, on, a, on a loan. Mm -hmm. So in my first deal, I actually invited another person to be a, a, my KP and co-sponsor. Uh, mm. Because he had several Fanny loans on his resume. And it yeah, always helps. helped. And that's also oh, yeah. part of the team. The people that you ask to co-sign on a loan with you, it's also important that they bring a good resume. Because sure. uh, I have net worth liquidity. I have some experience. Well, if I bring someone else with uh, even more experience, that's even better. Sure, sure. Just just make sure that the deal closes. So there's no no surprises, no last minute rate changes or anything right. that that pops up. Uh, you know, there there is a, absolutely a subjective nature to to lending. It's not completely empirical. There there, you know, opinions matter, and so the more right. the more you can bolster your loan package, the better you are. Well, the good deal, of course, that now I'm able to also bring value to other people because uh, mm -hmm. now that I have uh, three agency loans on my resume, mm -hmm. now, of course, some other people ask me if I would like to be a KP for them. So that kind of works both ways. You kind of get your afraid of any card and then right. you're able to help other people with that. Yeah. So that's, that's great. No, that absolutely is great. So tell, you've got another deal about to close. Tell us about that. Right. So we should be closing in a couple of days. So mm. that's uh, uh, 76 units in Fort Worth. Mm. And uh, so we are very excited about this deal. My first deal was a syndication. So mm. a group purchase when I accepted several equity partners. And this group is actually a tenants in common structure. So we it's a partnership, know. basically. And so uh, you didn't have to you didn't have to do any SEC anything with the SEC because no. everybody's actively involved. And guys, yeah. you can do that. Uh, you know that's that's a high level the high level difference between a syndication and a uh, and a partnership. And you did it as tenants in common. And if everybody has an involvement in the deal in some fashion, they sign on the loan or they're actively involved in the decision making, you don't have to do a syndication. You can just do it as a partnership like you just did. That's awesome. Yeah, Correct. And in our case, we actually were not able to do the syndication. And the reason is, that's, uh, I'm going to give you some technical details. So one of my uh, partners, he is doing 1031 exchange. Mm. So to be able to qualify for that, he has to sell uh, real estate and buy real estate. So when you do a syndication, by definition, you're buying shares in the LLC. So you cannot complete 1031. So our case was a little bit more complicated. Mm. And that's why we decided to not go syndication, not go partnership, but actually go straight tick. Uh, yeah. so, so that's interesting. In my opinion, I like those deals better. Frankly, I, you know, you don't have to spend the money. You don't. You're not under the scrutiny. Uh, you don't have. You know, it's just a partnership. Now, of course, you want to make sure that the partnership documents are everybody's protected, and you have somebody that that's done a lot of those put it together and 
because there are a lot of things you have to think about when you're doing a, a high level partnership like that, you know, buyout provisions and how the decisions are made, who plays different roles in, in the group, if any. And, right. You know, yes. Yeah, so in our case, basically, uh, these two partners of mine, they are from different states mm. and I'm kind of playing a local boots on the ground in mm. this uh, deal. So that's uh, very good for all of us because they would otherwise be unable to actively supervise the deal. Mm -hmm. And I otherwise would not be able to purchase the deal of that size by myself. Perfect. So it kind of worked together for the, for the three of us to put uh, our money together and our resources and uh, my time, of course. Yeah. So worked this, out that, good. Uh, this, is, this is adding a ton of value to my listeners because they're all, you know, able to get ideas from this. So this is, this is great uh, that, that it's a unique structure. Now, did you say you have another one on the horizon that uh, you're... Uh, so we are looking for, for other deals as well. So okay. I'm, Usually submitting a lie, so my next one will be in a week on a bigger deal. So mm. it's just oh. constantly, once, once you reach one goal, you have to set a bigger one and go That's for it. Right. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Right. Anybody that listens to this podcast knows how I feel about goals. Let's, let's, that's a great segue because I know you're, you're a big proponent for mindset. Uh, you've got your psychology degree, so it's obviously a love of yours. Um, let's talk about that a little bit because, you know, my, my listener base is – you know, there are a lot of people that have not taken down their first property yet. And I know, you know, many of them may have limiting belief system, you know, I call them BS, limiting belief systems. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, or, or, or fear, uh, fear of the unknown, fear of failure. And some, some of the analytical ones have fear of rejection. How would you speak to them? So I think you always have to kind of do this SWOT analysis, I guess, to mm -hmm. evaluate uh, what do you have? and uh, what you not have, and also kind of make a roadmap for yourself. Like okay, let me stop you for one second. Guys, a SWOT analysis is something that, that, that entrepreneurs and business people use to evaluate where their business is going. And the SWOT stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And it's a great exercise to go through. I love that you suggested that. That's never come up before, but you can actually do it as it relates to you. Look, you know, right. what are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? What opportunities do you see? And, and what are some threats? I love it. Thank you. So great. Yeah. So, so that's what I kind of uh, did for myself. And then of course, uh, you have to evaluate your path, like where you are and where you want to be, and then uh, make a plan how to get there. So mm -hmm. for me, what I usually like to say, do not um, uh, create a bicycle, just basically find someone who been there done that and follow the steps. So that's kind of what I did. Uh, mm -hmm. So for myself, um, I you, basically found a, you found a mentor and you had somebody right. to learn from. And, and yeah, this is not a simple business. I mean, it's, I'm not going to say it's insurmountable. Obviously, it's not. It's definitely doable, but you can't dabble at it. And if, if you're getting into the millions of dollars, you absolutely should have some oversight uh, and somebody that's done it before that can, that can keep you from making big mistakes. That's kind of what I learned from Robert Kiyosaki because that's how it all started for me. Mm. Uh, he kind of said, uh, basically, just find someone who done it and done it successfully. And since we are talking about mindset, there are a lot of people who I call like negative Nancy, naysayers. Mm -hmm. So do not listen to them mm -hmm. because they're always going to say why you're not going to achieve what is it that you're trying to achieve. Listen to someone who done that and done it successfully because yeah. that's the only way to win here. So yeah. what I do for myself, I basically, I know my goal. I surround myself with the right people and just basically look at all of them because there are always a lot of people to learn from and each person can be your teacher. So I basically learn uh, maybe, I, I, use, I use my kind of, I choose my teachers. Mm -hmm. So I like this person, what he done. I like this person. So I learned what they did and kind of follow their path. So that's the best. And try to find someone who is successful. Because they usually will be positive and uh, optimistic. No so question. Yeah, be careful who you allow to influence you. Absolutely. And, and stand guard at the door to your mind. And, you know, sometimes it's a family member even. You know, it, 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 love them, but don't allow them to influence you. I, this comes up all the time. And, and, and no question, team, t well, not just team, but, but who you surround yourself with is who you become. Uh, I mean, it's, 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 oh, it's just a fact of life. So the, f the four people closest to you, take a look at how much money they make and who they are, because that's you. That's who you're going to become if it's not already you. That's uh, what I like saying. Yes, yeah. you, you, you become one of these uh, people that you surround yourself. 
No it's question. Not. So pick a high, pick a high peer group because that's how, that's how you es escalate. I mean, I remember when I, I tell the story, I drive in my Ford four door Granada and I worked for a guy and he had a Corvette and I, and I, and I elevated, you know, my thought process mentally because we all, it's very common to have financial limitations that we place in ourselves. You know, like you, you make what you must make. And so you need to you need to elevate that must, and right. and you do that by surrounding yourself with people so you can see it that that have it, so you can see it can be done. I love um, it. And uh, what I want to add also, um, I think it's important to always push your limits because mm -hmm. uh, once we are comfortable, uh, we are not making progress. So I always feel like sometimes when something like very difficult comes, and I feel like oh my god, uh, mm -hmm. how can I overcome it? And then I just tell myself, if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. Uh, it is difficult for the reason and that's why I have to go for it and go over go over my fears and just do it because only when you're in a discomfort that's when you reach something so every time when I feel like something is uh, too difficult thing okay that's it that's it <laughs> I, oh, I love that you've set that trigger for yourself that is a fantastic uh, way to twist uh, things that threaten you is to is to is to is to make that declaration. If 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 anybody could do it, it'd be you know it'd be if it was easy, anybody could do it. Love right. it. I, I absolutely yeah. love that. Uh, no, that's that's very good. I know that if if someone uh, is struggling and and hasn't taken action, I mean, what would you say to that person? If you know somebody's thinking about this business, tenure their coach. How would you coach them? Well, there are sometimes people come to me and basically ask, how do I start? What do I do? So again, I would just start by saying where you are and where you want to be. And uh, just basically find someone who maybe been there because sometimes it's difficult for people to relate. If someone is very successful or uh, wealthy and it's difficult to relate, mm -hmm. so basically maybe find someone who did just that. If this person is struggling, Mm -hmm. uh, maybe give an example of someone who been there, but they reached. So well, you are setting an example today, definitely. And 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 we don't have a lot of women on the show, and that's not by design. That's just the the. I guess it's the business. So it's a real treat to have you, and you're such a uh, such a treat to have on the on the show. And you're successful, and you're motivating. So I know you're going to inspire people. And and guys, you know, when we're talking about the SWOT analysis, I want to hammer something home. Everybody has strengths and play to your strengths and shore up your weaknesses with your team. Find people to help you with, with these other components of the business because uh, like Anna said, it is absolutely a team sport. Um, what, uh, what books do you gift the most to people? So, so everything that uh, kind of like everything started for me with mm -hmm. Robert Kiyosaki. Right. So uh, whenever people say, well, how do you even uh, start in this business? How do you set your mindset? I said, uh, just basically read this reach that for them. <laughs> and if it doesn't do anything to, for you, uh, nothing will help. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, if, if you read the reach that for that and your mentality doesn't change immediately. Right. Uh, I mean, that's, I don't know. My daughter was eight years old. Now she's nine that she read it by, by accident because I actually bought it for someone else. Mm. Uh, so she started to read it and she started to ask me all these questions and I thought, that's good. Oh, that's I love good. it. I because love that's it. how kind of how you start. Uh, mm. And then of course there are a lot of other books, but for me, I do not have too much time. So what I do to educate myself and to motivate myself, I listen to a lot of podcasts mm. because nowadays uh, with a busy life, uh, it's kind of difficult to just sit down with a book quite honestly. So every time I drive or do something, I'm just listening to the podcast yeah, and I too. have a choice of maybe 10 podcasts and now yours is one of them. Oh, well. that's sweet. Thank yeah. you. Well, thank you. So that's uh, what I do because that's how you can always find time to listen to something and basically educate yourself because you, you may be thinking, well, real estate, you don't have to get formal education. Well, maybe not, but uh, you have to help yourself. Don't be a dabbler though. I, dabblers yeah. get crushed. You do, do, now, if you're not gonna, you know, may know you don't need a formal education, but you definitely need to educate yourself. And, and I tell people, you take two paths in this business. You do the book study or the courses, and then you're out there evaluating deals and making relationships. And you have to do both. You can't do one or the other. The analytical people love to do the book study and the courses and, and evaluate right. deals, but they're, they're not great with the relationships. And the people like me that, 
types, type A squared people make every mistake in the book because they didn't take the time to, to learn the business properly. And, and I'm not afraid to admit it. I've made every possible mistake you can make. It's essential to not treat it as a hobby. Because right, after that's all, what I meant. Not a hobby. And uh, the reason is if you buy a house, I mean, what do you stand to lose? Maybe right. your money. But if you are a deal syndicator and maybe you have uh, 20, 40 people that invested with you, uh, you do not have a chance for mistake. No. Because that's you going absolutely... to be your last deal and you're going to have to move to another state. Right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, you absolutely you have, have to. to... Educate yourself. You have to educate yourself. That's the point. And like I said, in two ways. You have to be out there and you have to do the book study. You can't do one or the other. Um, so let me ask you this. You are very driven. What, what makes you jump out of bed in the morning? That's a question I like to ask sometimes. And I definitely want to hear your answer. Well, it's just uh, this business excites me a lot. Mm. I think uh, you, can really, um, you can really reach a lot. It's not like maybe having a job where you have a certain limit about which you cannot go. I think this, this business almost has no limits. Okay. Uh, the, the only limit is what you set yourself uh, for this business. And that's very exciting because if you can go and reach heights, I think that's exciting. Yeah, uh, no. Because as a human being, we, we like to grow and we like to achieve. So for me, it's ultimate achievement to be successful in this business. So hmm. when I think about this, it's kind of, it keeps me moving because I think it's exciting. Now it is exciting. And, and you guys have heard me say on the show, you, you, you need to love it. So if you don't love it, associate pleasure with it. And, and I tell people equate it to hunting for treasure because it really is. And, and it's critical that you, that you enjoy it because otherwise go find something else to do. Life's too short to do something you don't like. Hmm. Go ahead. So, so no, you please. just basically have to be passionate about this. That's mm -hmm. uh, kind of what you're saying. Yes. Because you see this business, they will have, um, there will be adversity. They will be difficult uh, times. And uh, whenever you hit the problem and you're not passionate about this business, you may potentially actually, um, you know, go out of this. Yo, you, you may, yeah, it, it'll, it could be a seminar yeah. and it could be, a, it could be your last seminar in this business. Yeah. yeah I, I think goals are critical. I think knowing what it is you want and as importantly, why you want it uh, is critical. Uh, I use pictures of my goals. Do you, how do you, what do you do to motivate yourself? Do you have your goals written out? Do you have pictures? What do you do there? So, yeah, so I do some New Year's resolutions and mm -hmm. it's not uh, notorious like some people do, but I, I can actually write down my goals mm -hmm. and I put a timeline to them because that's mm -hmm. the only way you're going to actually go for them. Mm -hmm. So I do my goals and I, I, I break them into smaller goals. Mm -hmm. uh, like let's say, okay, this is for this year, uh, but to reach this goal, uh, it's kind of like, how do you eat the elephant? You eat the elephant by piece. So you break into little pieces and you just go by little piece and you have a timeline for each. Uh, because if you don't, it's kind of like you're going to the well, I'm doing okay. Well, maybe yeah. you're not because you didn't just hit your goal uh, timeline. It's like saying, I'm going to lose some weight. But you didn't say how many pounds by what day. Now, goals have to be clear and measurable, guys. They have to be measurable. And I love that you, that you shared that. And I love the fact that you shared... You know, some of these goals are big. So how do you, like you say, how do you need an elephant? One bite at a time. You break it down. I love it. Right. Love it. Great, great feedback. Okay. What's a question I haven't asked you that you wish I had? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Okay. Uh, well, what's next for you? Bigger properties? So, uh, yeah. So basically, like I mentioned, I do have the IRA money that I invest passively. But my goal right now is, of course, to look for um, other deals as a deal syndicator right. and uh, buy them as a group purchase. So yeah. that way, of course, um, not only I uh, benefit from it, but also the equity partners that I Sure, sure. Uh, You're going to syndicate and bring in. Deals. Yeah, mm -hmm. because uh, essentially equity partners, they do not have the opportunity to purchase those bigger commercial deals by themselves. Right. So I think it's, uh, it's a great opportunity for all of us to... Uh, take down the larger assets uh, sure. together. So, sure. so that's, that's my goal. That's what I'm going to be uh, um, focusing on. Oh, good luck with it. I, it's, it's exciting. You're, 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 the, the, the snowball is rolling down the hill now. So, right. so if people want to reach you, they can reach you at simpsonmultifamily.com? Correct. All yes. right, fantastic. Well, Anna, it's been a real treat. I can't wait to see where you are a year from now or two years from Thank now. You. I'm sure it's going to be extraordinary. 
Well, thank you for being on the show and I hope we can stay in touch. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to the Lifetime Cash Flow through Real Estate Investing Podcast. If you've enjoyed the show, please subscribe and then take a moment to visit iTunes and leave a five-star rating and review. For more resources to connect with us further, please visit our website at lifetimecashflowpodcast.com. Tune in next week for our next show.